So next we will see the life cycle testing of the cells. So the objective of the cell, this test is to find how many cycles the cell can last before it reaches the end of life at certain specific use conditions. Again, applications vary. So if you are using the cell for EV application, your test condition may be different. If you are using for grid applications, the test conditions may be different for that case. So you should know what exactly you are using the cell for and depending on that you can build your procedures for life cycle testing. And the equipment re required is the same, the cell tester and the temperature control chambers. These also come in humidity control and other things. So test procedure again mostly deals with the variable charge rates, discharge rates, the depth of discharge, the temperatures and the profile, charge discharge profile. Charge discharge profiles mean that how you are charging the cell. So the standard procedure is CCCV charging, but there are also procedures like pulsed charging or CC charging or different type of charging. Then discharge can be a constant CC discharge or you can apply drive cycles also during discharging. So next we will see the some of the results for life cycle testing. First we will see the effect of depth of discharge. So depth of discharge is a very important parameter which tells how much of the battery capacity are you using each and every time. The two different curves. So one of them is done for 80% DOD, other one is the 100% DOD. Now 80% DOD would mean that you are cycling the cell from 10% SOC to 90% SOC all the time, which means that you do not charge it over 90% of SOC and never come below 10% SOC, so which accounts for 80% DOD. It can also be from 20% to 100% or 5% to 15%. So DOD is just the window of your usage, okay. So it can vary. So this particular test was performed from 10% uh, to 90% SOC. Next is the 100% DOD. So this is using the entire capacity of the cell. This is right from 0% to your 100% SOC. So you see the 80% DOD cell lasts for around, around uh, 1500 cycles till it reaches its 80 percent of capacity. So 80 percent taken at the end of life. So it gives you 1500 cycles, whereas the cell cycle at 100 percent DOD gives you around uh, 1000 cycles at 100 percent. So which means that if you use higher DOD, you will get less number of cycles. If you use lower DOD, you will get more number of cycles. But the trade off is if you use lower DODs, you will have to frequently charge your vehicle or charge your mobile phones, right. And if you use higher DODs, you can go on for the same charge, you can go on for long distance or you can use the mobile for longer time. So there is always a trade off, but it is good to use the cells at lower depth of discharges, it will give you higher life. Next is the effect of temperature. So this curve shows the cycling of cells at different temperatures right from 10 degrees, 25, 45 and then 60 degrees. So this particular cell when cycled at 25 degrees gives you around 1000 cycles till it reaches its 80 percent of capacity and as you go on increasing the temperature you can see the life ex life end of life point goes on coming down. So for 25 degrees it is 1100 cycles, for 45 degrees around 600 cycles and 60 degrees it just goes around 100-200 cycles. So temperature is very important parameter. So this is where your thermal management comes in. So your thermal management system must always ensure the battery is in proper working temperature of around 15 to 35 degrees Celsius which means not only ambient temperature, but even when the cell is charging or discharging, the cell temperature should be in control for maximum life. How come it is giving more than 1000 cycles, like it is supposed to be more than 15 degrees Celsius, right? No, so 
so the other point this test is for one particular cell okay so this may not be valid for the cell which you are using so cells come with different additives which are mixed in the electrolytes so which enhance the performance at lower temperature or higher temperature so this particular cell may be, may be made for lower temperatures as well okay right so if you have indian conditions you may want the highest or best performance at 35 degree celsius so you will make the cells compatible at higher temperatures when you use for indian conditions the next effect of charging rate so this particular curve shows how the cycle life is affected by your rate of charging so this curve is for charging at point 3c always so each and every cycle is done at point 3c charging and this curve is for 1c charging or the fast charging so we are always crazy for fast charging right we want a mobile phones to get charged to 100% in 10 minutes 15 minutes and we don't want to keep it plugged in for 4 to 5 hours but this is how the effects can be so faster we charge the higher is the current flow in the battery the higher will be the heat generated and then the higher will be the rate of degradation whereas for slow chargings the currents are lower and there is low heating and you will get high number of cycles so you should always have some optimum charging rate set for the battery charging once in a while for higher currents at higher rates is okay but charging every time at higher rates is not good for battery again it depends on battery to battery if the battery is meant for high rate charging it can also give you good number of cycles so the entire point is what type of cell are you using and how will that, that cell behave for your rates so you cannot generalize the results few generalizations can made that may, can be made like uh, lower dod can give a high number of cycles but you cannot tell that this many cycles will be given at this much dod so there is no formula for this you have to test the cells next are the candle aging test so we already saw that cell degrades not only while charging or discharging but also when you park your vehicle the objective of this test is to see that with time how the cell degrades when it is stored at different conditions and the applications again for your application which you are using you should know that what should be the battery temperature whenever you are storing it or when when the cell is shipped from the manufacturer to the end user how should they be shipped in what state of charge should they be shipped shipped and when it comes to you you will for storing the cells then what temperature should you show, store the cells before you make the battery pack so these all should be known the equipment remains the same the cell testers and temperature chambers and in test procedure we use two parameters for candle aging that is the state of charge at what soc you are storing the cell and the temperature at what temperature are you storing the cell so aging will depend on both these factors we will see how it depends so it is impacted by both storage temperature and storage state of charge so this is a curve which shows us the aging dependence on temperature as well as soc so each point denotes for a particular cell so the blue line is at 25 degree celsius so cell is stored at 25 degree celsius the yellow line is for cell stored at 50 degree celsius and red is for cell stored at 50% degree 50 degree celsius and all these data points are collected after 10 months so this is degradation after 10 months so if you see with temperature higher the temperature higher the degradation is lower the temperature lower the degradation this is the general thing which you can make out for temperature dependence so it's like at uh, at 40 degree celsius you already have double the degradation as at 25 degree celsius but when you go just 10 degree above that you will have again double the degradation you had at 40% at 40 degree celsius correct so this is the temperature variation 
So, this mostly comes into uh, picture when the vehicle is parked in uh, direct sunshine, direct hot sun. So, internal vehicle temperature may be huge, very, very, very high, it may go very high. So, that time it affects your battery packs also. Then the next dependence is on storage SOC. So, you can take just one temperature now. So, consider 25 degrees Celsius. So, one case is you have kept the cell or battery at 100 percent SOC. In other cases, you have kept it at 40 percent SOC. Okay. So, when you keep the cell at 40 percent SOC for 10 months at 25 degrees Celsius, you will have around 3 percent degradation. right? But when the same cell is kept at 100 percent SOC for 10 months at 25 degrees Celsius, you will have around 6 percent degradation. So, what this means is never keep your cell phones or batteries plugged into the charger. So, many will have the habit of just putting your charger for overnight charging and leaving it the entire night. So, this would mean that your battery is at higher state of charge and which would mean it, it will degrade faster. Okay, The cell will give very less life. So, that is dependence on SOC and temperature plus at so yeah. So, at higher SOCs you will have higher degradations, lower SOCs will have lower degradation. So, best case for storing the cells is store the cells at around 30-40 percent SOC and at around uh, 25 degrees Celsius. So, that is how the cells are shipped after they are manufactured and going beyond 0 degree 0 percent SOC or is also not good because it may lead to chemical properties, chemical phenomena like dendrite formation other things. So, going beyond 0 percent also not safe. So, this is what is we call is a deep discharge of battery packs. So, battery should not should never be allowed to deep discharge, they should never go beyond 3 volt per cell. And if they go beyond that value and stay at that value for a long time, it hampers the battery life. Okay. Then the next curve shows the dependence of internal resistance. This is DC resistance. This 10 second means the pulse which we spoke discussed. So, 10 second of pulse is applied and you have measured this resistance. So, again at so as your SOC goes on increasing, the resistance also varies and it is also dependent on your temperature and state of charge. Okay, then let us at last we will just look at few testing standards. First is the USAB standard. This is United States Advanced Battery Consortium. Then Underwriters Laboratory, then AIS the Indian standard, the SAE standard, IEC and there are many more other standards which have standards defined for uh, battery testing. Okay, any doubts? Sir, how does the life varies with the uh, like if it if a cell is at a higher SOC, mm. how will the life uh, degrade? Yeah, so it it all has to do with the chemical reactions inside. High temperature would mean higher chemical reaction. The rate of reactions will no, be if, high. If it is kept uh, at ninety percent SOC mm. uh, and uh, not plugged in. Not plugged in. Then the life should. No, because when you when the cell is ninety percent SOC, you charge the cell. The charging itself is like putting the stress on a cell. So when you charge, the cell swells up. Okay, discharging the cell shrinks again. So in charged case, there is high stress for internal components of the cell, which leads to higher degradation for. Okay, thank you.